Welcome everybody to Indie Resources 13th video on how to build a browser based MMO 2.0. Um, in this video we're going to kind of, the, the biggest thing to do is go ahead and um, after you watch the video get the new code, get the new SQL. Um, I would go ahead if I was you to just go ahead and you know delete your old um, your, your old database and import the new one. Um, because I had to like I never actually downloaded the other other um, database and saved it I kind of rebuilt it called it MMO tutorial just create your new database import the SQL which all you got to do is hit the import choose the file choose the file that's the SQL file and the zip file when you import it and everything will be built and you'll be at the same place as I am that's really all there is to it um, and you'll see you'll just have maps and players there's no classes and really that's all there is to it just that that'll get you equal to where I'm at today and we'll be ready to kind of to move on to the next one as, as far as that goes because we are going to mess with the maps a little bit second piece is um, I'm going to change a couple things here like this is aggravating me this is just ugly and we need to, to move it what I'm going to do now just for now is I'm going to shrink this and just stick it right here just to get it out of the way and then I'm going to center this map right here so let's do that real quick if I go to my index.html uh, here's our logo right here Let's cut that out. Let's just delete this. Like I said, you'll have it in the new code. Just grab the new code, but I just want to show you what I'm doing real quick. So where that says brand, which is right over here, it's a link for now and we'll leave it that way. We can come back and change it if we want. Save that. Now we don't want it that big, so I'm going to go ahead and resize this for us. It'll be resized in the new stuff. So image size, I'm going to change it to 100. Save it. And then if we go back, we should see it move up here. It doesn't look that pretty right now. Like I said, we'll fix it later, but it does give us a ton more room to work with. Second issue is this needs to be centered. So we have a little menu over here and a menu over here if we need it. And it kind of centers all of this up. So this is a pretty quick fix. We go into our index. Let's find where our map is being drawn. It looks like right here. So it looks like we've got from, well, that's ugly. Let's do that. So we've got from here to here. So this is div five, and then we got column two and a column three. Let's see how far our row goes down. So that's our whole row of where that is. So that's good. So what we can do is let's just copy this. Let's create us another one right here, but let's change this down to, um, let's give it a size of three. Let's go four. And then this will give us five, which is nine. And then we'll have three left over at the end for another column, which is perfect. So if we save that and we go back to our page and refresh, it'll, it'll center set. You know what? I think three would probably look better. Let's change that to a three. There we go. That looks a lot better. That way we, we got a column here and we can make a column here for putting other stuff. So <clears throat> that quickly like cleans us up to where we're kind of ready to start on the next piece, which for me, the next piece is the map. Uh, so just to give a quick synopsis of, of where I kind of want to go with this currently right now, we can open this up. If you go to your map.js, which is just in your um, scripts, JS engine, you'll see where we're building the map and we're just basically creating it off of data that's kind of already there. Um, it's, 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 well, what it's doing is, is it's, it's going back to another function and it's, this, it's making a decision on what should go there, but there's not very, really a whole lot of dynamics. It is building on the fly, but it's basing itself off of a constant, which I don't like. So what I want to do is, is I want to build it on in the database and then it just sends it back. It is going to be a bit of a change of our code, but I think in the end you're going to like it a lot better and it's going to make a lot more sense. And we can make, we can make better, we can make changes to the map that you don't even have to update the code. As long as we update the back end, it's all going to fix itself. And the other thing I want is like every hour the the code will will change. So for instance, you know, this on map build will will build itself and then every hour as people start lumbering and do and mining, the, these will change and you'll see them change, but they'll be dynamic. So for instance, uh, let me turn on this pen and see how this works. So you've got like a block here you got like a block here and you got, a, uh, how many do we got across here? I can't remember. But anyway, you've got all these blocks, right? And in each one of these, you've got nine points. Terrible artist, but you'll see that you kind of have these nine points. As of right now, this if, if this is a certain number, this will always be that. 
if this is a certain number, this will always be that. F so it'll like this will always be grass if it's a certain type of number. What I don't like about that is we can't randomize it because if you randomize it today, this will change because of the randomization every time you move. Every time you like take a oops, let me turn that pin off. So every time you move, um, that's going to change a little bit. So and, and then the map would be all crazy. But if we build it in the database and make a change every hour, it'll always pull to where no matter how much you move, it's going to be pulling the same um, data from the database. Now, if you happen to move in the middle of that hour change, you'll see it move change a little bit, but it won't be huge because we're not going to make massive changes with it. So that's kind of where I want to go. And where that will lead to is we can build player houses, we can build stores, we can build all kinds of really cool stuff that the world actually changes with what the players are doing. And that's kind of where we want to go with this. So this is, like I said, this is going to be a pretty big change in what we were doing. Let me clear that out of there. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to we're going to pull all of this out and we're going to put it in the back end but instead of kind of trying to copy and paste this stuff because of php and everything else we're going to rewrite how we want to do it so let's take a look at our map designer.php this is the function that gets called on the back end that builds our map so we've got this randomization between um, 0 and 80 so it's 0 to 40 is the random and then it's automatically 40 so it's going to be from 40 to, uh, all the way up to 80 is the numbers that it just randomly puts in the database for hum, hum, harvest, lumber, scrap, water, hunting, whatever. So the first thing we need to do is go into our database and we need to go to our maps and our structure and we need to create a place to store this. So let's add one column and we will call it, uh, what should we call it? Let's call it, um, I was thinking map structure, but I want it to I want it to make sense. Um, the map locale would kind of make sense, but let's let's just call it map design, and it's going to be a text because it's going to be pretty large, and really that's all we got to do there. So let's save that, and when we look at our browse, we now have this map design. So now we got to fill this map design with something with the actual the way the map's designed. Now the nice thing is is that each one of these is just one of those squares to where technically this is only going to be nine spaces. So it's going to be these nine here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we just need to fill them and we'll put commas in between them. So that way we know the difference. But the reason why I didn't make this like a var, a large var care is that some of you guys in your games may end up having like a thousand different, uh, images that to where you're going to be like a thousand comma a thousand or like nine times or nine thousand nine or whatever it is to where it's going to get large so i made it text but this way we can build it as big as we want so and i don't know how much we're going to get done in this video on it but we're at least going to get started so here's where we're going to have to build it because we, we want to build it in before the result so we're going to put in map design and then we're going to fill that data right at this end right here, which we're not ready for. So let's go ahead and put map designs, create an empty variable. And I'm just gonna create it. I'm just gonna initialize the variable. That way we can come over here and we can enter it so we don't forget it later. So we're gonna put a comma and then we're gonna concatenate it with our map design. Now, <clears throat> the only thing we really need to do is Let's do this real quick. Okay, save that. The only thing we really need to do is create the image number that it's going to be. And that's kind of where I'm actually lacking right now is I don't have the images created. So let's look to see what we have in here. I don't have any new images. We can use the same images we have. So let's look at our media terrain. These are the foregrounds. So we have them here. We have the zero. We, we already have some images that we can use. So the only thing is, is that it looks like 9, 10, we jump from 12 to 20 and then to 30. So, which is still, still doable. We can, we can still figure this out. So I, what we can do is we can take a look at our front end and we can see what we're doing up here. So our, so this parse foreground map which is in our tools, I believe. So it's been a while since I've touched this code, but I'm gonna get caught up quick. JS scripts engine, looks like terrain builders it. 
We didn't have a lot here. Okay, here we go. So here's where we're actually parsing the map. But remember, we want some randomization to this. So what it is is we start with water and we return a tile based on the water level. So we can actually do that right now. We will have to... So let's just take this. See, we don't need this anymore because we don't care about the tile number. We are going to loop through nine. So let's go ahead and build our for loop for that. Let's go back to our map dot uh, our map designer and here's where we're going to build our for oops i zero well i is less than nine and then i plus plus so we got us a little loop here that we're going to we're going to loop through and we're just going to create some kind of um we're going to create basically just a way for it to figure out what should go there now probably the smart way to do this is to build a function that figures all that that out but because this is a, just a one pager and it's it's not really going to be used anywhere else i'm not too interested in creating a function i'm just going to put everything in this loop so i am going to split this out just a hair and we're just going to start here so of course we're gonna have to change some stuff here so let's do this. Let's replace everything in here. Let's do a find and re a quick replace. Replace it in the selection, and we're going to replace our data dot water with our water variable, which is just dollar sign water or PHP. And then let's replace all those. Okay. So there we go. So if water is greater than five and water is less than 10, return this tile, so forth, blah, blah, blah. Those tiles relate to, and we are going to make this way more dynamic in the future and make it way smarter. But for today, just to get like the idea that we want and to get things started, we're going to go with a, I don't want to say too simplistic. We're going to go with something a little simplistic. This may go over two to three videos as I build this. So we're going to stop the video here because what I want to do is I want to create some better graphics and more graphics because the rest of the system is going to be, I want to take how much water, how much lumber, how much mining and whatever else you want to add. I kind of want to make it dynamic enough where you can add other stuff and combining creates the tile that it needs for all nine of those to where each tile has kind of a, it kind of looks at all of the different things versus just one here, one there, but we need a lot more graphics and I want to make the graphics spread out enough to where you guys can add a ton of graphics to where there is no need later on to add anything. So we'll stop the video here. I'm going to upload the co current code I have with the SQL code and then the next one you'll upload the new graphics and anything else we add after that.